Alicia <laughs> Mackay. Yeah, I'm broken. <laughs> You're broken. What's on your mind? So I hurt myself uh, late last week. And then. Well, you fell over? No, what? I hurt myself at the gym. And it wasn't a big deal at the time, but over the three days afterwards, it built itself into a nice wee injury. And so I've done the rotator cuff in my shoulder. Um, <gasps> which is just annoying right it's yeah. just really annoying and so I went to the physio this morning and it's all strapped in and like it'll be a couple of weeks before it comes right and sounds like it's had a massive ripple effect it's had a massive ripple effect like it's a stupid shoulder injury I'm quite prepared to just live my life with some pain in it that's fine that's normal that's normal <laughs> but it seems to have like I just I'm, I'm dead my whole body's yeah. like that my brain's gone that I've had no energy. I spent all yesterday on this couch, like forcibly tied down just about so to this So this is part of a, a system called this, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. At one point after I've been on the couch for the first 90 minutes, Cam comes through and he's like, how are you going? You've been resting? Hmm. And I was like, yes, hmm. I have read two articles on rest. <laughs> I've been busy reading <laughs> articles on resting. <laughs> very interesting sociocultural background the concept of rest like a day oh, totally. of rest oh, like, anyway, so can i thing. pick up on that yeah give you a break because yeah. you've been talking a lot totally. you need rest i need a rest yes so so i as you know i was away in taranaki for five days and you're and supposed to be refreshed now i found it really hard to stop and not do anything yeah and and i reckon this idea of resting is anathema to what society says is successful mm. you know and and i felt not guilty but just agitated that i i couldn't not do anything mm. and always having it like ah oh, i'll read a book now or i'll make a cup of tea that's resting or, or i'll go for a walk isn't it but it is but it was also <laughs> like my brain was on yeah and i think it's the oh. resting the brain which has been quite hard and and so, yeah, just kind of stopping and not having to think about anything. I, I sent you I some articles really on that. Hard. Could you? Yeah. I'm not going to read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, so hang I, on. I, I you get just said... hard, it's hard to stop, right? Yeah. And you were just saying like, um, there's a societal thing about it, right? So there's a pressure. And I think... What all I've been thinking this afternoon is that there's something structural about this, and that's been triggered for me too because I've just had to finish this workbook for my Get Your Shit Together group, which, by the way, I had to cancel a webinar last night directly beforehand, and that cut me deep inside. No I had doubt. 33 women who were ready to come online and have me help them get on top of their lives, and I couldn't run it because I wasn't on top of mine, mm -hmm. and it killed me. It absolutely killed mm -hmm. me. But anyway, I've made them this workbook, which is really, really cool. It's got all these great things in it, and I just wrote this intro being like, by the way, this might be about how to be more awesome, but you are already awesome and the world, this isn't your fault. The world mm. is making it hard for you to be on top of things and it's not mm. because you're failing. Yeah, it's the structural thing, right? And so, so the mm. running joke was Alicia can't rest. She's not a good rester. Ha, ha, ha. And yep, okay, there's definitely something in that. Don't get me wrong. But beyond that, there's no capacity in my life for rest and that's not my fault. Like, I've got three children to look after. They need feeding. I've got to get them out the door. I've got a house to run. I've got staff that rely on me. I've got clients that rely on me. I've got, like, and not only that, I reckon at least, I've been thinking about this concept of an invisible list lately, and I reckon at least half of what I do lives on my invisible list. That's a really good idea. The invisible list, yeah. yeah. Half of the it's stuff there. stuff you don't even make conscious, but you know it's, it's weighing on you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So at least half of that is mm. the invisible list and things I'm like my kids were so good this morning and they were like patting themselves on the back. We are so helpful for mum. Like Charlotte did the dishwasher and Bailey did half the lunch boxes and they're like, We are so helping and I'm like, For every one thing you do I'm still doing ten I didn't mm. say any of this. For every one thing you do I'm still doing ten and you mm. don't even see what they are. You mm. don't even know. Mm. What is that shit? It's interesting that see this thing about structural forces too, right? Because I was I had a lunch with a friend before I came here and he was saying out of my whole career I've had probably 12 bosses and there's only one I respect that has been great as a boss mm. and I said it's not your fault boss it's not their fault right it's a systemic structural thing I think I don't think people are intentionally bad as bosses I think there's reward systems and whatever that's at play that drives mm. certain behavior and it's sort of yeah like don't make someone else bad because they can't do something. It's like, well, actually, the environment they're in enables 
or disable certain ways of being and certain ways of operating and including not resting. Yeah, and at the risk of getting gendered about it, and we had this chat partly before when we were putting dinner in the slow cooker, which was nice, it's like we're talking about, I was like, fuck, I just need someone to come in and just run my house, right? Like, I need help at home. I have help at work. I need help at home. And Cam was saying, oh, I feel a bit weird about that, you know, like I've spent time in countries where they have a full staff in the house, and I've always felt a bit weird about it. And I'm like, yeah, like it does feel a bit weird. But then I was unpacking that a bit, and I'm going, yeah, but... It's because we don't value that mm. and there's something gendered in mm. that. So we're happy to get someone to help us at work because those jobs are important. Mm. And we're happy to get someone to do childcare when we're in, in the office because that's important mm. we're in the office. But the reason we don't feel okay about getting help at home, a cleaner, someone to help around the house, someone to help with the kids, because that work isn't valued the same. Yeah. Yeah. You should be able to do that. Yeah. It's your job. It's your job yeah. when you're a woman. Can I give you some feedback? Yeah. I really like your lower energy. <laughs> what? It's and and it's a vulnerable. Yeah, way I, I of could cry up. any minute. I've yeah, cried like I'm seven times it, today. Right? I cried I'm, just I'm before really you got here. By it. Yeah, and I just yeah, just letting you know it's oh. it's different because usually you're like raw here I am. And yeah. It's like here I am. Oh, it's good. actually really nice. Yeah, and it's showing a different side of you. Shut up! I might cry now. Yeah. Right. Can you fix it? No. Oh. I'm listening to learn, not listening to fix. Ah, ah. Oh, that's a bit cheeky, isn't it? <laughs> What's on your invisible list? I love that idea that we've all got these invisible lists. And I'm wondering, what if you made your invisible list visible? And what might you do about that?